Our next speaker is Marjan Farid, who's going to tell us about the EK alphabet soup, which flavor to choose. Wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on this esteemed panel. It's amazing because I'm going to talk about EK, but I'm sitting here among the giants and the pioneers who really got us to this point to even be talking about endothelial keratoplasty, Mark Terry and Frank Price and others on this stage who really are the reason we're at such a great place in uh, corneal transplantation and lamell lamellar keratoplasty. These are my financial disclosures. So I'm going to start with a case. Let's talk about the 72-year-old woman that presents worsening vision uh, a year after she had cataract surgery, uh, uncomplicated cataract surgery, and she has gouté in both corneas, as you can see, some mild corneal thickening and uh, some uh, central uh, uh, cluster of gouté. Um, and I know Dr. Patel, our own Dr. Patel, has done a lot of research and shown us that central gouté, uh, even in the absence of thickening of the cornea, can have significant higher order aberrations, backscatter, and visual um, distortions for the patient. So what do we do with this patient? Well, we've got a whole alphabet soup of EKs to choose from. So the big push we're seeing is there's a big uh, movement towards thinner and thinner grafts because of speed and quality of visual recovery, but surgical challenges have also increased and, and limited us in certain ways. So which procedure is ideal? Um, DSEC, where we take endothelium, decimase membrane, and stroma. Our traditional DSECs were as thick as 140 micron thickness tissues. Ultra-thin DSEC, where now we have a little bit less posterior stroma, and even nano DSEC now, where we can get tissue as low as 40 microns. PDEC, which is uh, decimase membrane plus a little pre-decimase membrane and maybe a little bit easier to manipulate, uh, but smaller. DMAKE, which is just decimase membrane and endothelial, uh, endothelial uh, cells. And then Dr. Colby, who's really leading the way on uh, DWEC, decimase stripping without endothelial keratoplasty, and where does that fit in? So again, this picture of the DSEC was uh, one of our earlier grafts. That tissue thickness wouldn't even be acceptable probably in this day and age. And the push towards thinner and thinner grafts, are we really making a difference in terms of visual acuity? So earlier studies did show, even in DSEC, that thinner tissue was associated with uh, faster recovery and better quality of vision. More patients had 20-20 vision. Looking at a randomized multicenter clinical trial of ultra thin DSEC versus DSEC, these patients, even though the endothelial cell loss was equal and the complication rates were equal in the two groups, the ultra thin DSECs had uh, faster and better visual recovery uh, overall. And here is a uh, graph showing from this uh, publication showing the improved and faster recovery with the ultra-thin DSEC. Well, what about DMEC? DMEC now we know is the purest form of endothelial uh, keratoplasty. We're only replacing decimase membrane and endothelium. There was an initially uh, slower adoption, and a lot of this had to do with tissue loss. Patients had to, uh, excuse me, uh, physicians had to, surgeons had to uh, prepare their own tissue in the operating room. And their, uh, the challenges with that and potential loss of donor tissue uh, became a big challenge. But with increased surgical techniques and improvements, um, this has really become now almost the gold standard for standard uh, pure endothelial decompensation. We do use somewhat older donor tissue so that um, unscrolling in the eye becomes easier. We do need good visibility of the anterior chamber. And there is still increased complications with eyes that have hardware, where there's glaucoma implants, where there's poor iris anatomy. And these are the areas where we think these DSEC is still has a role. And here's how we're getting our tissues now. They're preloaded, pre-punched, pre-stamped, pre-stained. It's really taken the difficulty out um, from the surgeon's hands and put it in the hands of the um, IBEC uh, IBank technicians who are doing these day in and day out and really have a good grasp of handling the tissue and providing really excellent quality tissue to the surgeon. So now we um, inject them, open them up, and we get visual results with DMEC. Um, um, you know, as early as week one where the cornea is absolutely clear and patient has 20-20 vision. Dr. Price has really paved the way in terms of showing us that graft rejection is also significantly less when we have less, less tissue that we're transplanting. 
Again, this is from Dr. Price's study showing that with DMEC, there's faster visual recovery and better visual recovery than with DSEC. Contralateral eye study that was published a few years ago showed that patients who had DSEC in one eye and DMEC in the other eye really preferred the visual quality they were getting out of the DMEC uh, eye. And a randomized clinical control trial that was recently published by my friend Dr. Winston Chamberlain and Dr. Rose Nussbaumer that really um, masked the refractionists and the technicians who were looking at these patients who had DMEC versus ultra thin DSEC. They didn't know what uh, the patient had had. So there was double masked, double blinded study, and they found that DMEC profoundly outperformed ultra thin DSEC in, um, in these patients. What about DWEC, decimase without endothelial keratoplasty or decimase stripping only? These we found that are good for a subset of Fuchs patients where the uh, dense gutae are central. Uh, there's a four to four and a half millimeters of decimase membrane that's stripped centrally and not scored, and this allows for migration of the endothelial cells. A clearance can take one to six months and the rate of visual recovery is variable. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to seeing how this plays a role in, the, in a su subset of patients with central gutte. So let's go back to our case. We had a 72-year-old woman, uh, again, endothelial decompensation after her cataract surgery. Uh, we thought that uh, there, the, the decompensation was more diffuse and probably was not a good candidate for decimase stripping only. Visibility was good. There was no stromal scarring, no glaucoma implants. So this patient had DMEC, and she had 20-20 vision at post-op week two. So in conclusion, endothelial keratoplasty really now is the standard of care for endothelial disease. We're seeing fantastic visual recovery and tissue preparation with DMEC. DSEC, we definitely think, still has a role uh, in more complex cases. And DWEC um, for central Fuchs-related gutte shows a lot of promise, and we'll see where that goes. And as surgical techniques and eye banking of donor tissues evolve, outcomes and safety are continuing to improve. It's a fun time to be a corneal surgeon nowadays. And thank you all for being great mentors and really paving the way for all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Bajan.